Hey folks, today we're going to do a quick video on why we get numbness, tingling in our feet. Generally, just discomfort in the sh in, with our shoes and with our feet. So the most common thing, or the first thing, the simplest place to start, is just to make sure that your shoe fits properly. Many people come in with shoes that are too tight, too narrow. Maybe they even have the system strapped down too tight. A thick sock can even make a difference, or see if I can get this one out of here. An insole that's too large. This is a cycling specific insole that has a very low profile for the most part everywhere. Um, and so this is kind of the low hanging fruit. This is the first thing to check. Many people have already done this though and they're still having problems. So then what? Besides the, foot, the shoe being too tight on the foot for whatever reason, um, the most common thing, thing that I see in my bike fitting to cause foot um, pain, discomfort, numbness, hot spots, that sort of thing, is having the cleat in the wrong position. With the cleat, when, and the most common way is when the cleat is too far forward. Now you can see I have mine all the way back, and that's just personal preference. Having the cleat all the way back isn't, isn't strictly necessary. Um, and it's going to vary depending on the shoe, depending on the pedal type. The shoes are drilled out slightly different, um, and of course the, some pedals um, sort of place the cleat either a little further forward or further back. Um, and it's also going to depend on the person's anatomy. Having longer toes might, uh, might require that the cleat go a little further back because it's going to take the metatarsals, which are the balls of the feet, and with the longer toes it's going to place those further back in the shoe. What, the, what this does, when we have the cleat too far forward, I always tell people, it, I liken it to having to do a step up with just the, on your toes. And what that's gonna do is require a lot of stabilization through the calf muscles um, to stabilize this very long lever from the ankle here out to the, out to the cleat. And of course I'm exaggerating way out here. We don't, we don't put cleats on our toes like this. But what, um, what this is going to result in it are a few things. One, it's again, it's a long lever to stabilize. Um, it's going to decrease the amount of work that the glute muscles and the hip extensors do as well. Um, and that's why you see uh, weightlifters often will do squats in very flat shoes, um, but because getting the force through their foot, more through the middle of the foot and you know, staying, as they say, staying slightly on your heels can help engage those big hip extensors. So having the cleat too far forward sort of in, upsets the balance between the quads and the hip extensors. It also just puts more pressure through the front of the foot. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a comparison with my you know, hands and feet, because hands and feet share a lot in common, but uh, because they, they have very, similar, um, they have very you know, similar anatomy in a lot of ways. Um, most, a lot of the muscles that control our hands aren't in the hands, they're in the, you know, the area just above, like in the forearm for the hands, and of course in the, for the feet, it's in our calf. So having the cleat too far forward on the shoe and making us you know, stabilize this long lever will often cause the, the toes and the feet to kind of grip. People often will relate feeling like they're gripping the bottom of the shoe. And they'll sometimes even feel their toes kind of pressing in and, and, and what that's gonna do is increase a lot of tension in the foot, okay? And because we're having all these little intrinsic foot muscles uh, do more work essentially. Um, and that's going to increase pressure in the foot and potentially put more strain on and put more pressure, excuse me, on the nerves and create some of those hot spots and things that we were talking about. Having the cleats also further forward, it increases the amount of toe down that, that people generally pedal with. Um, and this can have an effect on a lot of different places. It'll affect how much weight we're placing. Or, um, excuse me, it's going to affect the distribution of force and, and weight that we're getting through our feet versus through our hips, so it can upset the balance on our bike. Um, but it also just causes the foot to slide forward in the shoe and creates more pressure on the forefoot. This increased toe down or, or inappropriate toe down um, can, uh, can be learned, but it also can be facilitated like, by something like a, like a poor, uh, cleat, uh, poor cleat positioning that way. Now this is one, this is one um, instance. It's it's fair. It's a it's a it's a uh, it's not quite as common, but many people experience this. If you have pain on the outside of the foot specifically, 
One cause, one potential cause for this, and by no means is this the only cause, but is when somebody has a, um, what's called a forefoot varus position. So I'm going back to my hand here. And the forefoot varus means, if this is my left foot pretending, okay, that we we, our forefoot wants to maintain a posture just like that, where the, where the big toe is up off the ground just slightly. Um, and of course we don't do this all the time. We do it in a, in a limited weight bearing position. Because obviously we're standing or walking, that foot's gonna be flat on the forefoot for the most part. Um, but cycling is, through many parts of the pedal stroke is a limited weight bearing activity. So we have, you know, what happens is we have the inside of the shoe for in most cases is relatively flat, but the, the foot actually wants, would rather rest in this posture just like that. And so that, that then through the power phase, we're actually getting pressure on the outside of the foot or on that, on the, on the small toe or the, the pinky toe out there, um, the fifth metatarsal. Um, one potential solution for that is we can actually wedge the cleat slightly. We can, we can put a wedge under there that lifts up the inside of the cleat just a little bit. And what that's going to do is, because obviously the, the, the cleat always is going to engage with the pedal the same way. All that the wedge is doing is taking the shoe and tilting it this way on the cleat slightly. And so what I always tell people is your foot is already wants to be in this posture, this, this big toe up slightly posture. And all we're doing is bringing the shoe up to match it. And of course, both of these are exaggerations. We're not going to move either. Neither one is going to be moved that much, but we're just talking about fractions of a degree, like from flat to maybe, you know, a couple of a degree or two. And many times this can relieve that foot pressure because we're now allowing that rider to engage through the big toe and that's ultimately where we need to finish the power phase of our pedal stroke we can't we don't want to finish out here in the middle of the foot we want to finish through that first metatarsal actually what we call our, the first ray the met, first metatarsal and the big toe okay so finally i want to talk real briefly just about um, inserts in our shoes insoles inserts orthotics whatever you want to call them um, Many of the ones that come with shoes are usually not very, they don't really do a whole lot. They're just covers inside the shoe, even from companies that swear up and down that everything that they're making for you is, uh, is designed around your body. Um, many of the times when I have clients come in, um, they may have even had a, a pair of orthotics built for them, um, or they've bought something off the shelf. And many times these things don't solve the big problems. They might not solve uh, for instance, how someone's knee is tracking, uh, which certainly can, can stem from a foot issue. Um, because many, most orthotics that are made, or most inserts, are geared based on, they're, they're built around walking, running gait, not cycling gait, which is slightly different. Um, and so while they, and so they often, like I said, they often won't help the, the major, the big problems. But that said, they might not hurt either. Um, there are certain circumstances where I've used an off-the-shelf, almost a, um, a, um, a, you know, a non-cycling specific orthotic and it's helped, uh, or insert that's helped somebody because primarily it's just provided a little bit of support. That's all they needed. They just needed a little support in the shoe and that helped to, um, to remedy some of their, what of their problems were, whether it was in the feet. Usually it is, it, it, it kind of just makes the shoe more comfortable for some people. Um, and again, the reason some of the, a lot of times they don't work is because they just take up so much space where a cycling orthotic is usually very minimal, very thin, and doesn't take up a lot of space in the shoe. And then mechanically is kind of centered around cycling as well. Um, now, um, this is not a sponsored, um, these aren't a sponsor or anything of, of this, but uh, so I'm going to show you these. These are the ones I have in my shoe. Um, they are carbon fiber. And so uh, they can be very thin, but also uh, reasonably rigid uh, and provide some good support. And um, if you're looking for, if you're looking for something, again, thinner profile is good. Um, and then something that the, you know, usually if you can do two things, if we can control, there's, there's two different things we want to control. If we can control the longitudinal arch, which is the arch we usually think of in the foot on the instep. So this is a right foot. This is a right insert and controlling that 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 longitudinal arch that can kind of help also keep the the heel in place um, controlling that with a little bit of support can be helpful 
Um, but we have another arch in the foot. Um, going back to my hand reference, so this is my left hand. Actually, since we're talking about right foot, I'll do right foot. Um, so this would be the big toe. Okay, so we, 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 we know about this arch on the inside of the foot. Again, that matches up with this. But we have another arch, actually there's a couple, but we have another one um, called the transverse arch, and it runs through the metatarsal heads or the balls of the feet. And um, it basically keeps those metatarsals sort of in this nice little arched uh, uh, position. Um, what, what happens for many people when they cycle is we have this flat shoe and the, 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 that we lose that transverse arch and it just goes flat and we end up pressing the metatarsal heads into the bottom of the shoe and that can put pressure on some of the nerves that run in between those, those metatarsals. Um, not to mention just irritating the soft tissue there. So having something on there, and this will be hard to see, I'm not sure it'll show up on camera, but right in here, you might see a little shadow, or a little, little raised piece, which is called a metatarsal pad um, or metatarsal button. And what that function is, is, is to actually go just behind those metatarsals and just lift them up slightly so that we can maintain that arch in the, in the foot that way, that maintain that transverse arch and keep those metatarsals you know, off the, um, or at least from completely compressing into the bottom of the shoe. So again, if you're looking for something simple, find something with a little bit of arch support and you can even, metatarsal pads, you can fashion out of, out of anything just to, even to try. I, I've had people even take their existing uh, insert from their shoe, this, that, you know, flat piece of fabric that's pretty worthless, and even just experiment with, uh, you know, duct taping a couple pieces of um, small pieces, cutouts of cardboard to the bottom even to help. Um, so these, these are the types of things that will not necessarily, again, they won't solve all problems, but for some people that they, they can actually, uh, they can actually remedy a few simple things. So thanks for hanging in there. I know this is a longer video. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll be happy to get to those. And uh, that's it for now. I will catch you next time. Thanks.